Brisket is the king of barbecue and bacon is the king of breakfast. So we're gonna find out what happens when we combine the two. What we have in front of us is not your average brisket. This thing right here has been dry aged for 40 days. Now I've never made brisket bacon before, much less dry aged brisket bacon before. I mean, just look at this thing, it's ridiculous. So honestly, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. But either way, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we need a giant full packer brisket. As you can see, there's tons of fat covering this piece of meat, which is perfect for dry aging. We also have some really nice marbling. You can see it through the package. This brisket looks great. And I just started by slicing open the plastic and removing the brisket. And we're just gonna do our best here to pat it nice and dry on both sides. So as I mentioned, really nice fat on top, which is gonna protect our meat. Again, just check out the marbling on that point section. This is pretty ridiculous. All right, and all there's left to do at this point is throw this directly in the dry ager, and we'll see you in probably 30 to 45 days. Okay, guys, it has been 40 days. Just check this thing out. It is pretty hard. I mean, you could literally use this thing as like a tennis racket or something. Doesn't really have a smell though, still seems pretty fresh, but let's take a closer look. As you can see on the flat side here, I mean, just check out how thin this thing has gotten. Turning it over, you can see how on this side there was no fat protecting it. We're gonna need to slice all of this off. And overall, we're gonna probably end up losing quite a bit of yield. And this is one reason why dry aging thicker cuts, something like a rib roast, is ideal. And I just began by removing that pellicle. Because the brisket was so thin at this point, my priority was to only slice off that thick exterior and leave as much of the actual meat intact as possible. And as you can see, the more I slice, the more we expose that beautiful red colored dry aged beef. Flipping it over, there's essentially zero fat protecting it here, so it's even more important to be precise with the knife. Okay, so our brisket is all trimmed up. As you can see, this thing shrunk in size considerably. All of this trim left over. But this actually should be the perfect size for our bacon. Pretty consistent overall. Let's make that bacon cure. So this here is pink curing salt. Very different than something like Himalayan pink salt. The reason they make this pink is so people don't mistake it for regular table salt. This is actually sodium nitrite, and it's what gives cured meats that distinctive color and taste. Combine all your ingredients in a bowl, and per three pounds of meat, you'll need about three tablespoons of kosher salt, third cup of sugar or maple, and a teaspoon of curing salt. And when it comes to your bacon cure, feel free to get as creative as you want. I'm just adding some chili flakes and a bit of garlic powder. Once mixed up, all that was left to do was add the cure to the dry aged brisket. It had sort of a paste-like consistency and I did my best to evenly coat the entire thing. Now I'll be flipping this brisket every other day during the curing step, so the flavors should end up dispersing, but it's still a good idea to start as evenly as possible. Place the brisket or pork belly in a vacuum bag. Either works, but I find that vacuum sealing is a bit less messy. Phase two is complete. Our brisket is in the brine. I'll see you in about a week. Okay, and just like that, it has been 10 days. Our brisket has been curing. Do I look different after 10 days? How's the hair? Did I get a haircut? I might've. Either way, 10 days of curing. Let's open this thing up. As you can see, it looks like a, quite a bit of moisture has come out of this brisket and it's quite red in color. Oh man, that smells amazing. It literally smells like bacon. And as you can see, the brisket has already taken on a beautiful red color, which is a result of the curing salt working into the meat. For the last step, all we need to do is throw it on the grill, keeping temps right around 250F, and we're smoking over applewood, low and slow. Okay, so our brisket is on, and this is a very special brisket. So for the BLT, we need some special bread. I do happen to know literally the best bread maker in the city, so I'm gonna call him. Yeah. What's up, Ben? How you doing? Doing great, it's a good day. Quick question, do you happen to have any bread that I might be able to use for today? I know it's last minute. I'm about to bake two sourdough loaves, one country plain and one with sesame. Which no, one do you want? No way, what? <laughs> That is amazing. I'll go with the plane, please. Dude, you are the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you, man. All right, well, that timing worked out absolutely perfect. All we need to do now is wait a couple hours to check on that brisket. 
and just check out the color on this brisket. You know, usually when I'm cooking brisket, I'm used to it being extremely tender, but because we only cooked it to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it's still quite firm. That's totally expected. Okay, I don't think I've ever been more excited to slice into something. 40 days dry aged, cured in a bacon cure, then smoked. This is looking ridiculous, but I just got a notification on my phone. The Uber with our bread just arrived, so let's grab it. I have to say, I was today years old when I learned that Uber allowed you to deliver bread across the city, but I'm not mad about it. Okay, the package has arrived. Freshly baked bread from today. Let's check it out. Not gonna lie, this is probably the sexiest piece of bread I've ever seen in my life. Ben, I love you. For those that know me well, you know that I know pretty much nothing about baking. There's a reason they don't call me Max the Bread Guy. But what I do know is that this bread looked absolutely perfect. Once the bread was sliced, it was finally time to slice the brisket, and I got my first look at the inside of the dry-aged brisket bacon. I was extremely happy to see that the red color was consistent throughout, meaning the cure had penetrated fully. Next, I took some slices from the flat. I decided to go really thin on the slices, since at this internal temp, we wouldn't expect the brisket to be too tender on its own. Though, the second cooking step will help in rendering the bacon so it's not as chewy. Even though it was dry aged, I could tell that there was still a significant amount of moisture within the meat. And a quick note, if you are enjoying this content, it would mean a lot if you would like the video and consider subscribing. It really helps me understand if this is the type of content you all enjoy watching. To fry it up, I did add a touch of oil to help it get going and cook the bacon on medium heat. Honestly, there's nothing better than the smell of bacon frying, especially when it's homemade. Once nice and crispy, it was time to toast the bread. And of course, I used the rendered bacon fat for extra flavor, then toasted on low heat. To assemble the BLT, I added a nice layer of mayo, lettuce, and some really fresh tomatoes that I seasoned with salt and pepper. Topped it off with a few slabs of bacon and more of that fresh bread. And I have to say, this was a pretty damn good looking BLT. It's such a simple sandwich, but at the same time, it's such a classic. And it really reminds me of my childhood. And I know some of you are gonna say that the tomato ratio in this sandwich is out of control. And to be honest, they might be right. But to me, the tomatoes are a critical part of this sandwich. And either way, it was finally time to eat. Okay, and here we are, starting with a quick taste of just the bacon. This might be the best bacon I've ever had. Right off the bat, it is supremely beefy. I'm not necessarily getting like a funky dry age flavor, but it's definitely like this concentrated beefiness. A little bit sweet, you get that smokiness. Brisket bacon is just ridiculous. Okay, it's time to eat the BLT. We just got a little visitor to be smelled the bacon. Um, here we go. Easily the hardest I've worked for a BLT. Can't eat this, I'm gonna like get it all over him. Oh man. All right, I'm going for a bite. Ooh, neck cramp. <laughs> Sandwich so big it's giving me neck cramps. All right, here we go. Easily the best BLT I've ever had. It's not like a super crispy bacon. It's more chewy, which I actually like in this case. Not much else to say here. I'm gonna eat this entire BLT to the face right now. But if you did get some value from this content, be sure to drop a comment. If you're watching this far, make sure you're subscribed as well. And I'll see you next time. Nice. He just is turning his dominance right now. I just love BLTs, honestly.